Hey everybody, welcome to The Objective. I'm Kendall, and just over here is our soup that we're making out of nothing. We're gonna get to that here in a quick second, but before we do, I just wanna say, this is based off an old story um, called Stone Soup that I read as a kid, which in turn is based off of an old uh, folklore, an old folk tale uh, from the Middle Ages in Europe. And the reason I wanted to tell this story, one, I was inspired by it, by a, a walk that I took recently during our social distancing, um, but I thought this was a very timely story. It is a story about, it's not about making soup. It's about community and the importance of working together. And so with that, let's go make some soup. It's actually a pretty good stew. I mean, after all, it's really made of nothing more than a stone and some water and a few seasonings here or there. But Actually, I'll let Paskindle tell you more about the details. And so now I guess it's story time. And really, this is a perfect setting for this story about a traveler, as a lot of these stories start off with. It's a traveler who is hungry and pretty desperate for food. And he shows up at this small village asking for food and excited at the prospect of finally being able to eat. But what he doesn't know is that this village is also starving. They've had a very bad winter, they didn't store properly, and they don't have any food. They haven't eaten in days, and some of them haven't eaten in weeks. So they are just as desperate as he is. And then he has the idea. He says, no problem, don't worry about feeding me, because I'm gonna just make soup out of a stone. So he takes his rock down to the stream, give it a good wash. After all, if he's gonna be eating stone soup, it better be a clean stone. And then he walks to the town square. And right in the middle of the town square, where most people can see, he starts building a fire so that he can cook his stone soup. And as he's doing that, the town's blacksmith walks by. And he's heard a little bit about what's going on, but he's still not quite sure what this is about. So he goes to the stranger and says, I hear you're making stone soup. And the stranger says, yeah. And he says, you really can make a soup out of nothing but a stone. And the stranger says, of course I can. And the blacksmith says, well, my family and I, we haven't eaten for days. And so I don't know if this is a trick or what, but if you can make soup out of a stone, I will let you borrow my pot since it looks like you don't have anything to work with. But I swear, if you're lying or trying to trick us in any way, That'll be the end of you. And the stranger says, that sounds fair. I get that. I'll make you stone soup. I promise it's real. Okay. So the blacksmith goes and gets the pot and the stranger starts making a stone soup. So that's it, right? We've got our pot, we've got our stone, stone soup. Well, let's at least put some spices in there, right? I think, let me try. Definitely some spices. Now, in the midst of all of this, the baker walks by and he hears this commotion and he's hearing what to him sounds pretty wild, that a stranger has come to town and is gonna to make soup out of nothing. He's skeptical, it doesn't sound right, but he's also desperate. So he goes home to his cupboard and he grabs the only little bit of edible thing he has left in his home, which are some spices, a couple onions, of garlic, a couple of cloves of garlic, and some old dried rosemary. So he grabs these last little bits of things and the last little bit of desperation and walks up to the town hall to where the guy is, the stranger is standing over the pot. So he goes up to the stranger with these few little spices and says, if I share these, me and my family get a bowl of it? Yes, you do. So he drops them in. And with this, the whole town perked up. You could smell these spices, these scents, that since there hasn't really been any fresh food in the village, they hadn't really had a reason to use the spices. So for the first time in weeks, they were smelling it, and it made them excited, and it made them hungry. Hungry across the entire village for something more than little morsels. Hungry for stone soup. And at this, all the townsfolk poured into the street, holding their starving, hungry bellies, looking at him, pleading in their eyes with just a little bit of hope. And of course, the stranger said, of course, you can have some of this soup. I will happily share any and all that I can, but it's not ready yet. It needs something. 
a little bit of something. Maybe carrot stems. Does anybody have carrot stems? And at this, the crowd got quiet because he was asking them for something. And they began to murmur just a little bit. At which point somebody jumped up real loud and boisterously and said, he's trying to trick us. He's trying to take all of our food away from us. At which point the stranger got up, tried to quiet them and say, no, I'm not trying to trick you. I don't want to take any of your food from you. It's just, I'm a perfectionist and I'm only going to make and share soup that is perfect. But way back in the back of the crowd, the town seamstress, Ellen, walked back to her house without saying a word. She went to her cupboard that was completely empty, except for three small carrots. She was saving these carrots for the perfect occasion, although she'd really forgotten what that was by now. In any event, her hunger took over and she grabbed the carrots. And so with her carrots, her last little bit of carrots in her hand, she starts working her way through the crowd and goes to the stranger and says, here, I'll give you these carrots if me and each of my children can have a single bowl of soup. It's in this desperate moment that we really couldn't call her brave. She wasn't really brave, she was scared, she was desperate, but she had a little bit of hope and it was that hope that she clung to as she let go of the carrots and gave them to the stranger. And the stranger took them and he said, absolutely. Now you and your kids go grab your bowls, come right back here, sit right here, and you wait here until I'm done cooking this soup. You will have the first bowls that come out. And like that, the whole town was in a flurry of activity, going to pantries, starting to raid things, getting anything they could to throw into the pot of stone soup. Their stale breads, their sprouted potatoes, their old cabbage, they brought them all out and added them to the soup that was being made in the town square. The stranger took a breath and he used that breath to look out at the very hungry crowd. He looked down at the soup and much to their pleasure, he said, I think the soup is almost done. It just needs a little bit of meat, pork fat, something, anything. Does anyone have? Anything we can add last little bit to make it perfect? And at these words, everyone in the town stopped and looked to one person, the person whose opinion they've been waiting on, the town butcher, who was also the town mayor. And he was standing in the crowd with his cleaver in hand, arms folded, watching everything as it happened. And at the silence, he took a big, deep breath and very loudly and very clearly said, no, no, this man is lying to us all. He's stealing our food. He called out the seamstress, Ellen, with the carrots. Ellen, what are you doing? This was your last little bit of food. Why are you giving it away? Why did you give away your bread? He called out to other families, your cabbage, your beans, why? No, I'm not gonna give any meat to this charlatan. Nothing and none of you should either. And with that, a hush fell over the crowd again. And the whole town was silent, except for the stranger, who was still calmly slicing the last little bit of vegetables that he had. And as the stranger cut the last little bits of food, the last few morsels that would go into this beautiful stone soup that the whole village was now getting ready to eat, as he was cutting them up, up stepped Helen. You remember Ellen? She's the seamstress, the lady with the carrots, the woman that started all of this. She stepped up amidst all of the commotion and said, you're right, George. I did give him my last bits of carrots. The last little bit of food that I have in this whole world for me and my family, I gave. But I didn't give it to him to feed him. And I didn't give it to him to take care of me. I gave it to him for all of us so that all of us could eat. Because by themselves, those carrots would have fed one person for one meal. But now they're feeding 50 people and maybe for a couple of meals. And so, you're right, George. You could keep what little bit of food you have. You could absolutely keep it. And no one would begrudge you for it. No one would judge you for it. These are scary times and we all have to take care of ourselves.
or you could take what little bit of food you have, the little bit of food that's not gonna last you and your family, a single meal, you could take that and you could put it in this pot and we could all eat part of it. And we could all have stone soup as a village together. And as a stranger, put the last little bits of vegetables in, George the butcher silently walked away and went back to his house. And the whole town froze silently waiting to see what George did. And then he came back out with a huge lard on, a piece of pork fat that couldn't do anything by itself, but in the stone soup would be amazing. And out of, again, desperation, fear, we don't really know what, he threw it into the pot. And with that, stone soup was finished. And it's pretty good soup, too. Well, the lesson's not too bad either, right? And it's because of that of why I wanted to tell this story. Because this story really embodies a mathematical and physical concept called synergy. And synergy is this thing, is this concept that says that an apparatus, a system, a person, whatever, an item, has greater strength than the sum of the parts that make it up. And so the real, the, the, the way to think about this is if you have two men and the most they can lift is 50 pounds. Well, if they work individually, together they could lift 100, right? This person lifts his 50 and this person lifts his 50 and they carry it off. But if they put it on a cart and lift or on a, on a platform and lift together, they together working can lift 150 pounds more than they could individually. And that's a real concept, a real physical mathematical concept. And so I really like to see, you know, that in a story form. And I think, I don't know when you're watching this, but we're recording this in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, right? Which is at the same time, I don't know what the history books will say, but it's at the same time as we're having this huge economic concern, this economic crisis. But the thing that every scientist most politicians, most everybody is saying is that the way we get out of this is to work together. No hoarding, no uh, buying all the supplies you can, that's working individually and that's not what folks are telling us to do. So I felt like it was important to remind ourselves of the importance of working together and that helping even the poorest, hungriest person actually helps us. And that's what I wanted to share. So hey, thanks for taking us on this journey. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, honestly, I'm not sure where this channel is going to go. Um, the, I started this channel to build hope uh, for myself uh, because I was seeing a world that didn't have a ton of folks who were using logic, who were thinking with their brains instead of their hearts. And so that's why I started this channel. But and now in the, the view of all of this, you know, one of the things that also is very important to me that I think we overlook quite a bit is the importance of our interconnectedness uh, and, and honoring and building that. And so, yeah, I'm not sure. If you have thoughts, if you are a long time viewer, if you've been watching us since the beginning, or even if you're brand new, tell us what you'd like to see. Um, this channel is intended to help all of us become smarter, brighter, better people. Right, that's the goal. Um, and I'm still working out what that looks like. But I also want it to be entertaining and fun. So anyway, hey, thanks everybody for listening, for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content, please subscribe. Um, help us become more popular and more known. Um, yeah, and as always, be kind to yourself and the people around you. All right, bye everybody.